Washington libraries. And um, a couple notes. Uh, today I'm describing a workflow uh, that was developed collaboratively at the University of Washington libraries. So uh, this was developed by a team, including myself, um, Theo Gerontakos, a cataloging and metadata librarian, Crystal Clements, a science cataloger, um, as well as others. Uh, and this workflow was also greatly benefited from a lot of feedback from our catalogers who actually used and tested these profiles. And I'll also um, apologize in advance for a lot of gratuitous XML coding screenshots. Um, so I should provide a little bit of background what I'm talking about when I say profiles. Um, so the University of Washington was a cohort member institution in the Linked Data for Production 2 project. Uh, and that means that cataloging staff here tested the Synopia Linked Data Editor. Um, and in order to use this editor, uh, a profile or profiles as described here are required. Um, and more specifically, uh, the resource templates within a profile are required. So a resource template uh, provides the Synopia tool with information uh, that says we're, we're going to make statements about a resource and the resource has this particular uh, class and here's the identifier for that class. And then um, for that resource, you can make X, Y, Z, et cetera, statements and here's how they should work. And then, and then the tool can use that and, and actually create that web form that a cataloger uses to create the description sets. Um, so, you may have noticed from the previous slide that the, the profiles are required to be JSON documents. And it might seem odd that um, we would choose XML tools to manage and output profiles that are JSON documents. Um, we did this for a few reasons. We, we knew that we wanted to um, create our own profiles. We also knew that we wanted a pretty high level of customization and that in order to do this, we preferred working directly with the profile encodings, um, even though there are some very good uh, profile editing applications with graphic interface uh, available. Additionally, uh, we knew that in the cataloging and metadata services department, our, our team that was working on this would be sort of handling everything ourselves in terms of really outputting um, and loading these profiles. And, and we wouldn't be handing off parts of the process to um, developers or anyone else. And so for us, for our team, uh, right now XML tools are some of the tools that we know best. Additionally, at this point, the XML tool suite um, contains some very powerful functionality that makes it pretty easy to go back and forth between JSON and XML. Um, and a uh, particular representation of JSON for XML has been specified at this point, and a couple of um, functions are available for use that allow that allow you to transform back and forth between the two serializations. So we knew that it was possible to do this. And the workflow that I'm uh, demoing, if you will, um, is I've broken up into four chunks. And so the first, the first of these segments is to assemble a single source for our profile. Um, so thinking about the building blocks we'll need, we want to have all of the entities or resources that we want to make statements on. Um, so for us in our, in our profiles, we've implemented statements on work, RDA work, expression, manifestation, and item. Uh, and then for each of these resources, we want in our source, at least, we want everything, uh, every element or property available for use, everything we might want to use. Um, and so the fact that uh, this um, representation of RDA in RDF is available in a uh, RDF XML serialization means that we could use XSLT code to bring that information in from the RDA registry into this source. <clears throat> Excuse me. And at this point, uh, we start to impose a certain structure on this source profile. And here we see that um, we're creating a number of keys 
for each property. And these are specified uh, by the required structure for Synopia profiles. So um, we, we are required to have these keys in and then we will um, go on to provide value for these that really will tell the tool how the property should work. So should it be mandatory? Should it be repeatable? Um, that will specify the constraints on values and so forth. Uh, but at this point, we also started to bring in some local keys that are not part of the specification for Synopia profiles that would help us manage our source and manage outputting to um, the profiles that we would actually load. So here you can see um, those five local keys and notable here are the top, the UW form order, uh, this is a numeric value we can provide to order our properties um, so that we can, we can uh, order the, how they appear in a profile. And then down at the bottom, the used in profile key. And this is a mechanism we use to go through the source and tag each property uh, that we want to appear, for example, in our profile for DVD videos or our profile for monographs and so forth. So we began to impose this structure, um, adding the keys required for Synopia as well as our local keys. And at this point we have our, our source. And so now we can go ahead and make those implementation decisions, uh, decide how we want the properties to work, where we want to use them. And so of course we do this by filling in the values for the keys. So we can see here, uh, some values we're filling in for the has author agent element. Um, and of course the property label and property URI would have been pulled in from the registry. So we know which property we're dealing with. And now at this point, we just go through and make our decisions. Do we want this to be mandatory? Uh, what do we want the type of property to be? So in this case, we've said, well, we want this to be a lookup. Uh, we want to use uh, Synopia's um, questioning authority lookup service to look for an identifier. And we go ahead and specify what source we want that to come from. Um, and at this point also, of course, we start to fill in the values for our local keys. So we see here that we've filled in a value for form order that's gonna put this property um, somewhere close to the top of a profile because it's really commonly used, um, which is also evidenced by the fact that we have it tagged for use in all 11 of our format specific profiles. And you can see those values uh, beneath used in profile. So at this point, we've, we've made our decisions and we've recorded those in the single source and we're ready to um, output one or more specific profiles for use in Synopia. Um, so we do this again, as we've done um, all the steps using XSLT transformation code. Um, and this is just a code snippet showing that we're pulling through those values. We're, we've, we've got keys and values and we're just pulling them through. Um, but I will note up at the top, you can see in the first line we're sorting and we're using that UW form order value to impose some kind of an order in the way that the properties appear. And then the second line of code serves to match on those strings. So uh, it serves each time we iterate through our source uh, and we're saying in effect, okay, I'm, I'm outputting the DVD video profile now. I want you to match on all the properties that have been tagged for use in that profile and to pull those out. Um, a couple other sort of code snippets um, to note are up at the top here, we see that um, we're using a transform function. And this function allows us to iterate through our source a number of times, each time using a different string for our format. So for example, we'll iterate through once using admin metadata so that we pull out all those properties that have been tagged for use in that profile. We'll iterate once using DVD video to pull out those properties and so on and so forth. And then of course, in the bottom image here, you can see that we're making use of that XML to JSON function um, so that even though we're we're transforming our XML representation, what we end up with is a JSON document shown here that is um, able to be loaded into Synopia, which of course requires uh, the JSON syntax. 
So um, as I mentioned, we got a lot of feedback from our catalogers as we, as we tested these profiles. And we found that making changes was an ongoing process. So we had to do things like, um, as you see here in some screenshots from essentially our change history in a GitHub repository, um, you see that we changed incorrect IRI or URI values. We, we changed our minds about what we wanted to be mandatory or not. We marked different profiles for you, uh, I'm sorry, different properties for use in different profiles. Uh, and these changes were happening at a regular, on a regular basis and were ongoing, but um, luckily because we had a single click of the button, if you will, for that uh, transformation scenario that uh, although the scenario runs once, iterates through the source multiple times for each of those specific profiles, uh, we found that we needn't fear making these changes. And in fact, we benefited from the fact that um, when, when a change needed to be made in a particular property that was used in multiple profiles, that we just needed to change it uh, one time in our source and then those those uh, corrections that we had made would be populated as we output uh, those new profiles. So thanks, thanks again for being here. Um, that wraps up the presentation portion and um, I will hop over to the questions document and take a look. Um, so the first question here is, did you use any local keys for admin metadata or did you use things that were pretty central to Synopia already? So um, interestingly, our admin metadata template uh, was a resource template, not for an RDA entity, but for a bib frame entity. So really um, the profiles are not pure RDA and RDF. Uh, the admin metadata resource template is, um, it, it creates a, a resource typed as BibFrame admin metadata and uses um, a number of, a number of BibFrame properties uh, to make statements about that resource. So I'm, I'm guessing that it looks at least somewhat similar to um, admin metadata templates in the, the bib frame, many of the bib frame profiles that were used in Synopia. Um, I'm not sure if that answers your question or not. Great, thank you, Jesse. Um, the next question, did you run into any challenges with existing entity using a resource template as they were updated? Um, Yes, I, I, if I understand this question correctly, um, I think that uh, what I understand is that, uh, <laughs> so sort of adding and removing properties as time passes, um, we found that, for example, going into Synopia and opening up a resource to do some more editing, um, in those cases when, for example, we'd said, well, we don't, we don't want to use this property um, to describe a monograph work anymore. Um, we found that um, the, the way that the Synopia tool works is uh, you open a resource in a resource template. And um, if there are some triples in that resource that that don't match any of the properties available for use in that template, they'll sort of be displayed up at the top. And so we found that we were left with some sort of orphan triples um, that had nowhere to go uh, because we had changed our templates um, and, and because those, those properties were no longer in use. So this was indeed um, a challenge. Um, I think it was maybe uh, sort of mitigated by the fact that uh, this was a very experimental project for us. And we were quite um, emphatic with our catalogers that, you know, we're, we're testing out RDA and RDF, and this is a real, uh, you know, 
uh, first pancake type situation. You know, it might, it might be burned, it might be shaped a little funny. Um, so that, that sort of freed us up to feel like uh, we, we didn't have to worry so much about uh, making data of record, but we could, we could worry about just really improving the profiles as best we could. Um, the request for links in the slides. So I have posted um, in the page in Sketch for this session, I've posted a PDF uh, that has slide images as well as explanatory text. And in the explanatory text, I've included the, the links uh, that are in the images. The, the slides themselves just come through as JPEG. So the links aren't in the slides, but they are, they are in the explanatory text. So that I think should work for your needs. But <clears throat> if, you have, um, if you have any more trouble, I've, I've got it on my to-do list to uh, keep watching this document and keep watching Slack um, after the fact. Oh, thank you, Jackie. I see that Jackie's just posted the uh, posted the PDF in the in the Zoom chat. Next question is: Did you develop your RDA profiles from scratch, also conceptually, or do there exist RDA profiles tool independent for various resource types that can be implemented in Synopia? Um, I'm <laughs> so. I'll be honest here that I'm, I'm very curious um, about who is or has used RDA and RDF. And, and I'll also be honest about not um, being very well acquainted with, with the history of use of RDA and RDF. Um, I know that the registry provides um, some very complete resource descriptions in a in a particular format um, and analyzing those and really looking into those has not been something that we have done yet um, and i think that's a real missing piece of our work at this point um, for our for our profiles that i've talked about today i think yes you could say that we did develop them from scratch so as i mentioned in the slide um, our first step was was to say okay well we're we, we know we're going to have a resource template for an RDA work and so we're we're going to pull into our source um, everything everything you got for a work and then um, from that point we we went through the process of deciding what we wanted to use and and we had our sort of mechanism for kind of you know marking those properties for use um, and saying that well yes we want to use this property. Um, for RDA work, for monographs, and so forth. And I think that that was, in our case, um, the product of a lot of back and forth from my teammate, Crystal Clements, who I mentioned, um, who really reached out to senior cataloging staff at the University of Washington um, and, and tried to get an idea because of the sheer number of excuse me, properties available for use, really tried to get an idea of what, what was most needed and what was most valuable. Um, so yes, I think, I think you could say, I think you could say from scratch. So that's all the, that's all the questions in the doc right now. I'll make sure and check back. Um, and thanks to all who posted questions and all who have posted in the Zoom chat. Um, and I think there's, there's just a minute left. So um, Paloma and Jackie, I think I'll go ahead and wrap up and stop sharing my screen. So thanks again, everyone.